Welcome to the channel. My name is Dan Lee and I'm currently building a quarter scale version of a boat design called Temptress, which is what you can see next to me here. This is a modern wooden construction, all new wood runabout design. And um, I'm currently building it in quarter scale for a number of factors really to sort of teach the process to, um, to a number of people, to you guys, if you want to learn the, uh, the process of boat building. And um, because we also sell plans for this, you can build one of these yourself at home. So uh, you can do that if you like. And I'm also teaching myself. I am also on that list of uh, students because this is the first time I'm building a boat of this sort of caliber. So uh, this is a process for me to get my head around the process before we hopefully get into uh, building a full-size one further on down the line. So what we're doing in this video, we are going to start putting on the bottom. So it's a cold molded bottom on this, modern wooden construction. So uh, we're gonna be cold molding the bottom of this and we're gonna look at a bit of the uh, process for cold molding, why it's done, how we do it. And uh, in this video, we're doing the planking layer one, first planking layer. So there's four planking layers on this boat altogether. We're gonna start number one in this video. So um, enough chatting, let's get on with, um, with this and have a look at what's going on in the boat. So since the last video, I've done a bit more work. I've got the uh, chine flats in and uh, trimmed down to size on both sides. So we've got those glued in now. And I've also done this chine top rail as well. Now there's a couple of things to note here that are just slightly different to the full size boat. So I'm just gonna point those out initially. This chine top rail, um, actually it's bottom rail, sorry, because the boat's upside down. Um, that will extend all the way down the boat on the full size boat. I've just taken it up to here because actually this timber is gonna get really tiny by the time we get further on down the boat because of this little landing here. So what I'm gonna do is just bevel off the ends of the planks and land them into the chine flat when we do that. So um, there's a slight difference there that you'll see. And the, the function of that timber is basically just to give something for this plank in to land onto as it meets the, uh, the chine flat lamination. So it's a little fillet effectively. So that's slightly different. Um, the other th key thing to note if you're doing this on a full size boat is to cut your limber holes now. So these will be holes through the frames here that will allow water to drain backwards through the boat. And they should be done on the uh, outward side of the stringers here and the outward side of the keel either side to allow water to run freely through the bilge of the boat. I'm not gonna bother doing that on this little tiny model because it's probably never even gonna get wet anyway. And it's gonna be quite a fiddly little scale. So we won't, um, we won't do that, but a couple of things to point out. So I've got the bottom fared off, fared off the framing and the keel and the stringers, and I'm in a position where I'm pretty happy now that planks are gonna land nice and neatly. And uh, that's a combination of various different processes of kind of landing a, a batten here along the frames and checking that you're happy that the gapping is uniform all the way along, or not, not gapping as it uh, really should be, a nice even land of the of the batten and then that's going to go all the way up forward here as we sort of spring spring this in and make sure that it's landing correctly on each frame with no um, highs and lows. In combination with that we want some uh, some mocked up planks so I've got a few of these here and we could just lay those onto the boat and we can get a feel for how that's going to land as we put the planking in that should be a nice even contact with all the frames the frames, the stringers, the chine here, and the keel, and um, a nice even, you know, we will not be seeing any dips and hollows and curves and that. So as we run a plank along here, we can see we've got a nice fair landing all the way throughout the boat. And that should continue right up into the forward end here where you can see that we'll be landing those planks right up onto the stem forward. And that's what we wanna see. Okay, so what is cold molding and why are we doing it on this boat? Well, cold molding is the process of laying timbers in opposing directions and gluing them together. So we, we make the bottom of this boat up out of several different thin layers of solid timber. What we're effectively doing is building our own plywood, but it's glued and molded into the shape of the bottom of our boat. So it gives us a really strong bottom to the boat, but it also gives us complete control over what's going on with the direction of the timbers. So you can see here that um, this is a little mock-up of what we're, what we're basically trying to achieve. This is gonna be a total of four layers um, 
by the end. But um, you can see that we've got the first layer that runs at 45 degrees to the keel in, uh, in this direction aft. And then we've got the second layer that runs forward um, at 90 degrees to that, so we're, we're crossed over creating this, uh, this pattern. Um, you might think to yourself, why don't you just chuck a sheet of plywood on there, because that's already created opposing layers. It'd be much quicker, and uh, you just get the bottom done. You could do that, but... Let's take a look at a sheet of plywood. It would go straight on there, it would follow the curve, but for a, there's a couple of reasons why we don't really want to do that. Firstly, that's gonna be grain direction. So if we use a sheet of plywood, we've got grain that runs lengthways, and then we've got opposing grain that runs at 90 degrees to that. So that means that our grain is running lengthways down the boat and then athwart ships. That's not really what we want. Actually, what we want is opposing 45 degree angles so that we stop the sort of torsional twist of the boat as it's, um, as it's in use. So the opposing 45 degree angles are, are really what we want. And in order to do that with a plywood, you'd end up having to kind of do it like this and then it'd be massively wasteful. Um, so plywood doesn't really get us what we want in that respect. Um, it's gonna be fine for some boats, but for a sort of fast planing a uh, hull like this, posing 45s is definitely what you want. It's much the same way that you would approach uh, like a biaxial glass system if you're using uh, composites or doing carbon work and stuff like that. You're very careful about how you orient the strands to get your um, stresses and strains and um, get your support and strength rigidity within the uh, within the layup in the correct direction. So that's what we want to do with um, with cold molding as well. It's basically a wood composite. The other thing with plywood is that um, we don't have very much control over the glue line. So these sheets of ply have obviously been glued in a factory, but um, we might not necessarily know what glue they are. You can pretty well guarantee that they're not gonna be epoxy and that is gonna not offer us quite as much support and protection as a properly cold molded hull will do. So back to our cold molded bottom, this offers us a massive amount of control over the strength and rigidity. It also helps us to form complex shapes. So the bottom of temperatures probably could be formed in ply, but um, when you've got boats that have got a, a particular sort of scallop and hollow to the bottom of them, like um, our slipper launch design Marilyn, you simply couldn't form that in plywood because it just wouldn't conform to the, um, to the, to the shape that we want. And when it comes to doing the sides of temperatures, you'll see that as well, because we've got those S-shaped swept sides there's no way that a sheet of plywood is ever going to pull into that shape. So a number of um, key benefits to this really, we've got full control over the wood grain direction so that we can keep our rigidity and strength exactly where we want it to be within the boat. We can also conform to more complex shapes, so that's number two. And then number three is that we have full control over the glue line with this process. So because we're going to be using epoxy to glue each of these layers, we create an incredibly strong bond. We've got a bit of an option for gap filling if there is any within the unfairness of the bottom. But we've also got an incredible moisture water resistant barrier in between every single layer of the bottom. And if we encapsulate each plank, we've got a water resistant barrier around every single plank. So that means that with having each plank entirely encapsulated, you've got incredible control over water ingress. So in the event that you do actually get water ingress into say one of these planks, it's only going to track as far um, as it can get before it then hits the next epoxy barrier. So if this plank is encapsulated on all faces and you get water into that one plank, it's not going to spread throughout the bottom. You might get one isolated plank that rots, but it's not going to go any further than that. We're going to have an epoxy barrier in between each layer of planking and surrounding each plank as well. If you did that with plywood and you got some water ingress into the edge of a piece of plywood, it's gonna wick in all directions and you could lose the entire of that sheet. It's gonna spread throughout the boat. So that's another key factor for, um, for being really thorough with epoxy encapsulation within a boat like this is that you're going to prevent the spread of um, any sort of water ingress, moisture, um, control potential rot issues. You're gonna have a hull that is gonna last you many, many decades if you do this properly. So, there we go, cold molding. That's what we wanna do. 
Okay, so a couple of minor differences in the way that I'm gonna approach this to uh, the way that you'd wanna do it on the full size boat. You would probably want to do a dry fit of pretty much all of this planking. So you're going to want to be getting these placed and just tacked down with some screws just to hold them where you uh, where you feel you want them. Trim all of your planks in as you go along and get to a position where you're you're entirely happy with that position um, before you move forward with gluing them. And that's going to involve you marking out their positions. So you're going to want to be drawing diagonal lines like this on the frames so that you uh, you know where that plank's going to be and then label it up as well so because i'm starting about here i might just go starboard one with that in fact i'm going to go starboard zero so i'm going to go starboard zero with that and then we'll go starboard minus one or something like that um, whatever kind of works for you really and then label up the plank the same so we've got a matching position now what I'm actually going to do is glue these in as I go along um, so as I did earlier on in the build I'm going to use slightly different glues here and kind of part away from the way that you would do the full-size boat just so that I can show you the principles but what you're going to want to be doing here is the same kind of process as we've been following with epoxy so that's going to be um, pre-wetting out the underside of these planks which are going to be on the inside of the boat so you want to encapsulate those with unthickened epoxy leave that to fully cure and then key it up and then we'll be gluing these in place afterwards. And that's going to give you a pre-encapsulated inside to the boat, which is going to be um, a nice uh, waterproof seal. It's going to save you a lot of work further on down the line. I'm just going to use quick set and glue so that I can get these planks placed and show you the process as a whole. So we want to start sort of relative, I suppose kind of in the middle of the boat, I'm a little bit further aft, but somewhere around sort of frame nine probably aft um, because the planking is going to fall um, much at 45 degrees in in the um, first layer from there aft what's going to happen as we go forward with the planking is that the angle at which that plank meets the keel is going to change slightly in order for us to get it to lay properly so we don't really want to start up at the bow you want to start a little bit further aft which is what i'm doing and we want our first planking layer to be running aft in this direction so i've got this first plank here cut so we're lining up nicely with the center line on the keel there we've got a good fall and then i've got a slight bevel on that plank which you can probably just see there just where that lands down onto the chine flap so i'm just going to use some quick setting glue and get that one stuck in place Okay, so plank one is in. We're gonna butt plank two up against that, coming aft. I've put a little uh, bevel on the back end of that. It's just so that it can land down onto this chine flat. And I'm gonna try and show you this, doing it one-handed. Now you can see that as we start to butt these planks up, we've got a slight gap in here. Now this is going to vary at different points throughout the boat. It's not going to be massively evident in the aft end here, but as we get up forward and we've got more curvature to the hull, we're really going to see this effect change. So what we need to do here is something called spiling, which is where we are going to cut the mating edge of this plank to match the trailing edge of this plank. And we're going to do that on one side of every plank. So we'll leave this one straight and then we'll cut the forward end of the next one that comes into that. Now there are a number of different ways that you can do this process. You can use some little tools which will um, which will allow you to transfer that curvature. So what you can do is just set this plank aft slightly and then you can use a tool that's going to copy the back line of this plank here over to the forward edge of this and then that's going to allow you to, uh, to trim it into place and get a nice match. Um, sometimes I'll do it that way. Sometimes I'll just do it entirely by eye because I think the more that you do things like this, you can just put a plank up and, um, and kind of work out roughly where it's gonna need material taken out. So we can see that this is gonna need a little hollow just coming out in the center here. Um, the other way I do this is with a little system that I use just to kind of roughly mark it. Um, 
and what I'll do there is I'll, I'll put a little mark on the plank which is where the sort of material removal wants to start or wants to feather out from and then I'll kind of come down with that I'm trying to do this one-handed whilst filming as well and I'll come down the plank with that and then I'll put a little mark on where the um, where the end of that finishes and then I know that I've just got to scoop a little bit out of that with the block plane so then what I'll do is I'll bring that plank over to the bench or something and put it down on a nice flat surface and I know that I can I need to start my cut or feather it slightly here where the um, the ends of the, my markings are and that's where I need to finish so if I've got to take a really deep scoop out of it what I might want to do is just do a few passes in the middle And then I just want to feather that out towards the ends of these so we've got a nice smooth transition. Now you know that I'm using my plane at quite an angle to the plank here, that's because what we're actually doing is trying to shape a slight cup on this and if I use it flat, the plane is just going to want to create a straight edge which isn't what I actually want. So if I use this at a, a sort of angle to the plank that allows me to actually scoop this a little bit. And then really what we're looking to do is just to make some tiny adjustments to that until we've got a nice tight fit. And to be honest, this is a process that once you've done it a fair amount, you can just sort of offer a plank up, look at it by eye. And just take a little bit more of a scoop where needed. until you're in a position where you've got a nice snug fitting plank there and you're happy that that is all good. Now what we want to make sure that we do is to transpose um, all the various parts of the boat through onto the planking so we can see what's going on further down the line. So what I want to do before I put the next plank on is I'm just going to put a tick mark there which is the center line of this frame and the same here And then it's not going to hurt just to mark the edge of my keel and the outer limits of my stringers. Those are going to be really helpful marks just to transmit what's underneath. So when it comes to, you know, if you're if you're doing this on the full size boat, you might want to be putting some like grip fast nails through this to uh, to pin planking layers down. And knowing where the structure is underneath is going to really help you with that. So we'll get this, we've got this second plank ready to land and then I'm just going to put a couple of marks up here so I can just trim off this end in line with the centre line of my keel. Okay, I'm happy with the way that that's going to land, so I'll get that glued in. I'm going to mark my framing just so that I know where to apply glue to. So again, of course, if you're doing this on the full-size boat, this is going to be with an epoxy. So you want to be wetting out all of these surfaces with unthickened epoxy first. And then applying something probably like the sort of West System microfibers additive, which is going to give you a little bit of gap filling um, potential if you need it within this. And of course we're going to be edge gluing the planks as well. I'm not actually going to do that with this glue because it's probably going to get a bit tricky. But um, 
you would also want to be edge gluing each plank together. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trimming in the um, keel end of these planks just with a little shoulder plane and actually I find that quite a nice little method rather than trying to cut this to the right uh, height I just get it roughly at the right size and then a few little passes just to take it into the aft end of the plank before and then line it up with our centre line on the keel. It works quite nicely and it gives me a nice straight inner edge to those planks. Okay, so I'm onto planking the second side now, uh, the port side, and things are a little bit more challenging this time around. So what we've got to do now is because we've got one set of planks on this side and we've got our nice straight uh, center line down the keel, we've got to get a good fit in here where this meets the, uh, the other plank at the keel. Then we've also got to spile it to fit against the previous plank that we've laid. And then we've got a bevel, the bottom edge to land into the chine. So we're shaping three faces here on this plank. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bevel on the outer edge to the uh, chine first. And I'll get that lined up with the one before. Then I'm going to spiral this. So there's not actually a huge amount of work to do. And actually in portions of the boat that are quite straight like this, and there's not a huge amount of curvature to the planks, um, sometimes the planks won't actually need spiling at all. So um, that's going to vary. As we get up into the forward end of the boat, you'll see there'll be some pretty severe spiling to do there, I would think. So um, we'll take a bit more of a look at that then. Okay, so in actual fact, now that I've got that trimmed in and I've got the plank pushed into place, it doesn't really need spiling at all along that edge, so we'll be, um, we'll be okay with that one. <clears throat> then I'm just gonna mark a, a reference here for my center lines. I'll join that line up. I'm going to rough cut that bit of stock off this, uh, leave my line there so I'm just a little bit outside where I need to be and then I'll just bring that down with the block plane and just fit it in, fine little adjustment at the end. So you can see that's rough cut, just oversize. And then I'll just trim that down. Of course, we're gonna have a slight angle 
um, to the end of this. So this doesn't want to be perfectly 90 degrees here. This is going to be just slightly under because we're now meeting another plank, which is coming up at this direction. So what I can do is just use my little block plane just to take that down slightly. And there we go, and I'm happy that that's meeting nicely. So it's meeting the edge of this plank. It's landing in the correct place on the chine, and we've got a nice join in there. And we're ready to, um, to get that one glued in. So as I say, if you're doing this on the full boat, you're gonna be dry fitting all of these planks ideally um, first. So whereas I'm gluing these as you go along, what you'll wanna do is this process basically, and then just tack that in place with a couple of screws transfer all your lines across from your construction underneath, mark up your plank and then do your marks on the boat underneath as well and mark that corresponding to the plank so that you know basically you can you can do all of this dry without the without epoxy or anything like that getting in your way and making a big sticky mess of all of this. Dry fit all your planks, do all of your little shavings and trimmings and get everything fitted nice. Then do a complete strip down, epoxy coat everything and then we'll be into glue up. So um yeah, it'd be quite a, quite a time consuming process to put the bottom on this boat, but it's definitely worth it to get it properly epoxy coated. So that's that one trimmed. I'm gonna get that glued in. Okay, so this is where we're up to now. We've got a good way along the boat, and uh, this is the point at which things are gonna to start to change a little bit. So what we've been doing up until now has been starting with a 45 degree angle of the keel line and letting our plank follow that line back aft. Now, as we begin to get forward, 
we're sticking with a 45 degree line at the keel. And you will note that the angle on the outside of the planking is getting progressively steeper. So we're roughly at a 45 degree on the aft end of the boat here. And then by the time we come up forward, we're starting to get steeper because everything is coming inwards on the boat. Now, if we continue to follow that as we come forwards, I'm trying to do this one handed again, um, what we're going to end up with is a plank at a really shallow angle here. You know, it's going to pretty much follow that and it's not going to properly lay up into the stem. So what we actually need to do with these forward planks is to alter this angle and it needs to swing upwards like this as we come forwards. So you can see that this plank here has a 45 degree on the bottom end of it. And actually if we place that on the chine, that's actually given us roughly the fall that we would like. So you can see that this plank, so if it carried on at this angle, we'd be really steep down into here and we'd be laying a plank at some strange position here which we really don't want to do. Now what we want to pretty much do is to follow a 45 degree angle down here on the chine and what this is actually going to do is slightly rotate as we come up and basically to determine what this actually wants to be up here is just really a case of sort of getting a, getting a plank right up in the bow here and sort of thinking to yourself, where is that actually best going to lie? Is it going to be 45 at the bottom? I think that actually lands quite nicely for what this is. We've got a 90 degree on the other end of the plank. That's a little bit too vertical for this design. And you could cut any sort of variation of angles on here to really see what's going to work best for you. Um, possibly a little bit less than 40 to 5 degrees might work. Something like this. But... Um, you know, I'm actually quite happy that that's landing nicely. It's going to form the shape correctly and we can try that at various different places along here. That's going to slightly start to reduce by there and that's landing nicely and forming the shape of our boat. So I'm happy that we're going to stick with, with that. So what I'm actually going to do is mark the position of that very first plank on there. So what's going to happen in order for these planks to do this, they're also going to need to taper because we've got a longer distance here on the chine than we have on the stem. And so the planks, instead of having basically parallel sides, they're going to need to start to taper in like this in order to get us to that position. So to do that, we're basically going to have to measure these distances here and then divide them down by how many planks we think we're going to need. So if we measure what we've got there, we've got 450 millimetres. So if we then take a plank width across this angle, following the line of the chime, we're around about 50 millimetres wide. So if we divide our 450 by 50 millimeters. That is gonna give us around nine planks. So what I'm gonna do is just mark out a rough sort of guidance for where each of those are gonna land. Then we can measure our distance along the keel. So that's gonna be a little bit more tricky because this is curved, but we, can, we just wanna be approximate really at this stage. So if we roll that ruler along there, we've got about 285 millimetres. So if we divide that by nine, that is approximately 31, 32 millimetres. So we'll also mark that out on here. Okay, now these have only got to be approximate dimensions really, that's just a rough sort of figure to keep us pr 
pretty much on target so that we know as we lay these planks if we stay pretty close to these tick marks that by the time we get here we're going to be into the right shaping to get that forward plank correctly laid and we should have a nice sweep of the angle between the two. Okay so I'm going to get a bit of plank in stock and I'm just going to get something roughly cut to size so what I'm going to do is use this forward tick mark here now for the forwardmost end of that plank and I'm tucking it back into this corner so we're using the full width of the stock there and then I'm just going to rough cut this so we can get it off this big length of timber Okay, and then I can mark a couple of things on this plank that are going to get me just a little bit closer. So we've got the, the bottom landing here that we want to taper off. And then we can take the width of the plank from up here. And that's going to be approximately that. So if we follow that line in. And that is roughly what our plank's going to look like. So you can see this line here, which is the taper from the full width down at the chine to the narrowed width up at the keel, which is going to start to create our change in the plank. And then we've got our chine line, which we need to trim down to there. These are just rough marks for the minute, so we'll get that cut down to those first. Okay, so you can see what our planks are going to start to look like now. You've got a slightly tapered nature to them. So we're full width down at the bottom here. And then we're narrower up forward. You can see the difference in the width of the two of those there. So that's obviously just cut straight because we've just taken that tick mark from the top there and joined it to that line there. So we just need to spy all this back edge now. We've got a bevel cut on the back side of that. So that's sitting down onto the chine nicely. So we just need to spile that in the same way that we've done with the other planks and then we can get that one on. I'm also going to change the way that this joint is now done at the keel. So previously we've been laying one plank so that it overlaps and then squaring that off vertically with a shoulder plane and then trimming the next plank in so that it butts up to that. Obviously, as we get up here, the angle into the keel and the stem is going to get significantly sharper. We could continue to do it that way. That's certainly feasible. You could square that up with a block plane. But actually, what I'm going to start to do now is to overlap these. The benefit of having the plank overhanging at the, at the keel line is that it's one less edge to trim. So you can, you can get this edge spiled. You can get the bottom edge fitted into the uh, chine rail. And then if you can overhang this edge, it makes it a bit easier to, uh, to juggle all the rest of them. So what I'm gonna do is overhang that and then I'll actually cut this face flush with the keel line here. So it will follow on all the way up through. And then when I do the plank on the other side here, I'll also be able to overhang that one without then having to trim it into the edge of this one. So. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, you'll see what I mean as I get a few planks laid. So um, I'll start getting some glued in.
Okay, so we have a few more planks laid and you can see that kind of feathered out angle now as we start to um, reduce that angle. Now, what's happened here is I've actually caught up a little bit quicker on the chine. So you can see that's our mark there for the next plank. But actually that's probably a realistically a plank width. It's gonna be about here. And um, I've been keeping on target through the, um, through the stem. Um, but basically that means that I'm now pretty much at the correct angle that I need to be. For this plank to um, to stay where it wants to be at that angle, we can continue that one on forward. You can see that matches now the angle that I just sketched on there when we set that first plank on. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay these as parallel planks again, but also because of the curvature of the stem, we're in a position now where we're actually trying to sort of pull quite a wide plank around that bend and these will actually go because these are only one and a half mil thick but on the real full-size boat you would probably um, not want to be pulling that in quite so much as that so what I'm actually going to do is just go down to a slightly narrower plank stock now so I'm going to rip these down and then take them maybe sort of two-thirds of the width just so that they'll follow that curvature around the stem a bit more but we can pretty much keep them parallel because they're going to lay nicely now so I'll get a couple of planks just thin down a little bit and then we'll just uh, fill that last piece in. Okay, so that's one side done. You can see how our planks vary throughout this section. A slight taper to those from, I think, 19 we started that on. And then we go up into some slightly narrower but uh, straight planks. And then we've got a slightly larger one just to finish off there. So there we go. Now I mentioned I was going to do this joint slightly differently. So I've done all of this side in one hit rather than cutting this vertical line down the center of the keel. So what I'm going to do now is just transpose this keel line straight through to these planks. And then when we do the second side, we'll overlap these. It's gonna mean that you've got exposed end grain here um, for this, as this plank comes out this way, but that's really not a problem, I don't believe, with this boat. We've still got three more layers of planking to do, so what we'll do on the next layer, obviously these planks are gonna come out this way, then we will overlap those to cover that end grain with the planking layer that goes over that and alternate. Um, and to be honest, anyway, the bottom is gonna be glassed on this boat and sealed anyway so end grain is not really an issue so i'll get that trimmed up
That is pretty nice, isn't it? So that's our first layer done. A uh, really nice stage to get to that. I'm really happy with that. And it's amazing how much you can really start to see the shape of the bottom of this boat now. So um, yeah, feels like a good, uh, good milestone. So you can see um, the sort of exposed end grain bits that I was talking about in the differing way that this joint is cut from, uh, from plank 20 forwards. And then as I say, when we do the plank in this side, we'll overlap that again and we'll continue to sort of overlap those. And then we'll stick probably with the, uh, the straight cut version down the central keel line. So when it comes to planking layer two, what we're gonna do is to run this in the opposing 45 degree angle. So this will actually be at sort of at 90 degrees, the grain direction to the, uh, to the first layer. This isn't a particularly straight grain board, so we won't actually be using this one, but um, just as an example, and you can see, you know, how these long runs of planks are going to tie all of these planks together with a with a cross grain orientation and create a really dimensionally strong and stable boat. Um, it's going to be really strong. So uh, you can really start to get a feel for that when you lay the second plank on and you see how that's going to go across there. Um, so yeah, really nice point. I'm happy to uh, happy to be here. So that is it for planking layer one. Um, in the next video, we're gonna look at planking layer two, which is gonna vary slightly in the approach to this. Um, there are a few things that we've got to do to this layer before we can proceed with the next. We're gonna give it a fair off. So it's actually pretty fair at the moment, but you've got some highs and lows with little variations in the planks. And we've got a slight sort of segmented nature to, uh, to certain parts of this. So what we'll do is we'll give this layer a fair off we can do a small amount of filling if, if necessary um, after this layer. And then what we're going to do is to completely seal this with epoxy. So we'll encapsulate all of these planks and there'll be a number of reasons for that um, to create a great moisture barrier between the two planking layers. But also because what we're gonna do for the second layer is we're gonna vacuum bag it. So we'll look at the process for vacuum bagging planking um, in the next video and we'll see how how that can be used within this process how it's a really great method for getting good consolidation of the glue and uh, exclusion of air within the um, laminations and um, a number of benefits it's a it's a fantastic system that i really recommend you look into doing if you're doing a boat like this so um we'll take a look at that in the next video so there we go, bit of a beast of a video that one, probably the longest one I've done to date, but um, there's a lot to get in there, a lot to consider within this process. So I hope you found it uh, interesting and useful if you're gonna wanna build one of these or any kind of similar cold molded boat. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. So I'll catch you in the next one where we'll be putting on planking layer two. Cheers guys.